What's good gang, Sledge here on another tutorial. Today we're jumping into the details of the cameras in Rust. Stick around and you might just learn a thing or two about these specific items that bring some major intel to your gameplay. We're checking out the CCTV camera, the PTZ CCTV camera, auto turret camera, and the drone. Feel free to skip around to whatever item you want to check out. As a start for all cameras, you will need a computer station as well as some electricity for some, but not all of the cameras we're checking out. As a general standard, you'll need to tap E on these items to set ID to match your computer station to access your cameras. This is the same for all four of these items. Feel free to get more info from my video card above in regards to the function of the computer station. Now let's jump in with the basic of all these items, the CCTV camera. It requires three power to operate and once placed, holds a stationary view of the area it captures. You can bring a hammer to these cameras and tap the E key to move the angle of the CCTV to your preference. This item can only be placed on walls, not ceilings or floors. Moving on to the mouthful that is PTZ CCTV camera, which in my opinion is the upgraded juiced up version of the CCTV camera, gives you the ability to control and rotate it 360 degrees from its placement. This item, unlike the CCTV camera, can only be placed on ceilings, but not walls or floors. Alongside the 360 range of view, it has four zoom distances, which can simply be accessed by clicking your left mouse button to adjust the view distance. I found myself using this item over the CCTV camera due to its unique features. What would make the PTZ CCTV camera even cooler? If it had a gun attached. Sounds like a dream. But in reality, you can access the camera of an auto turret. When linked to an auto turret, you gain access to its 360 degree range and can aim and shoot weapons as if you are the turret. It's more fun than useful since when you leave it uncontrolled, it pretty much never misses its shots. But you do gain control of its 360 degree field of view and override its standard 180 degree range when it's not taking damage. Lastly, we cover the drone. This item is fragile, but a blast to use. This item requires no power. You simply fly this bad boy around and scope out the terrain. The controls are simple. You hold shift to go high and control to go low, followed by general motion via the WASD keys. Just make sure when you descend to land, you slowly tap the control key versus holding it. If you hold control from a high elevation, it will take damage upon landing. This item also has a range of around three blocks from the computer station which I think is solid for how much total radius it can view things from. Be wary of how noisy this item is as players can easily shoot it down as well. I like to post these drones on top of electrical towers as it's a high point advantage when you first start them and completely dodges the risk of random players nabbing it from your rooftop. Keep in mind, if you exit the computer station mid-flight, this drone may fall to its demise. The same can be said about poor placement where it can tip over and take damage or break or if an easy to grab location can be picked up by random players that discover it. Overall, this item is my favorite of all camera types. It's just a fun item to control. All in all, this video was less about electrical and more about the functions of items within the electrical universe. I hope you guys learned something from it and maybe you can get in some drone racing with your friends during wipe. If you could do me a solid, like this video and subscribe if you want more sludge content. We've got plenty to cover. With all the camera talk, let's come to a close. Happy rusting, my friends, and I'll see you on the next one.